He's an expert on the big one, the giant earthquake that will someday happen here in the Northwest. And now he's leading the network that monitors earthquakes in our state from the University of Washington. King 5's Glenn Farley introduces us to him tonight on the eve of the nation's biggest earthquake drill called the Great Shakeout. Glenn, good to see you. So that's kind of a reminder tomorrow of what is why we all sort of need to pay attention to all of this so we can get ready. His name is Harold Tobin. In a few months, he will head to Japan to continue 15 years of research into how subduction zones like the one off our own coast function. He'll do that by continuing to drill the world's deepest hole, work that may one day warn us when the big one is coming. But I'll show you the power of these earthquakes that happened as pieces of the world's crust collide. Every clear day we look upon them, the Olympic mountains. But there was a day when the Olympics weren't mountains at all. Those are all bottom of the ocean rocks. That's where they formed, you know? And they went down the subduction zone part way, you know, 20 miles down or more, and then got jacked back up by the faulting process. Yeah. Harold Tobin remembers those days as a grad student poking at ocean rocks nearly 8,000 feet in the air. Subduction is what made the whole Puget Sound region and Pacific Northwest look the way it is. And this is subduction, which forces the land up when the expanding ocean crust is locked under North America. The Cascadia subduction zone is a giant fault. When the pressure builds, those plates slide. And a magnitude 9 earthquake and tsunami with waves that could reach 100 feet along parts of the coast. That's what happened in Japan in 2011, killing 16,000. But Japan has two subduction zones. This was the northern one. The southern one has an earthquake and tsunami about once a century. Yeah, in Japan, what we're doing is basically investigating a subduction zone that's just like Cascadia, just the mirror image on the opposite side of the Pacific Ocean. But the research performed here and by looking at other large earthquakes around the region is holding some promise. Not earthquake prediction, but detection. The warning signs that could signal the big one is on its way. In the hours to weeks right before the earthquake, things were taking place, um, creaks and groans, the strain was taking place. And so a major research goal is to understand how those faults are behaving prior to an earthquake so that maybe someday in the future, we actually have some tools that will show us that there are precursors. We can see how subduction, the locking together of those plates before the earthquake are distorting the land we walk on. But the ocean floor offshore is a blind spot. How much distortion is happening out there? One of the things we really absolutely need to do is extend our data network offshore. In Japan, there are lots of instruments now, even in the deep ocean on the bottom of the sea. We don't really have that here off the Washington, Oregon, British Columbia coast, and we need it. As the new head of the Pacific Northwest Seismic Network, which is also part of the West Coast Consortium to provide people with at least a few seconds to minutes that an earthquake has started, depending on how close you are. It's called Shake Alert. We were reporting on it mm -hmm. years. It is right. continuing to roll out and is getting closer and closer. So as the system evolves, how will people know that the earthquake is coming? So you can eventually be able to get it on your computer. Right now it's being used largely in, in a pilot project for commercial customers like water, you know, utilities, mm -hmm. airports, things like that. It's, it's California, Oregon, us. But in a few years, you should be able to get it on your phone. Hmm. Wow, uh, so like, an, like so, an app on so your an phone. an app, it will track you around. So it depends on how close you are to the start of the earthquake. Wow. And it will give you that much warning as to how much time before the big shaking starts. So the closer you are to the epicenter, you'll get it. You'll less have warning. less time than less. someone way hmm. far away. Exactly. Oh, wow. All right. Thank you, Glenn.